Bleach is coming back! After years of waiting, the Bleach anime has finally returned. However, since it's been so long, I decided to recap the entire story of Bleach. Today we will be solely recapping the second arc, which is the Soul Society arc. This arc has to be regarded as one of the greatest arcs in Shonen, and while I definitely think it's great, I think it's truly only the starting place for greatness to come. In fact, it would only be my fourth favorite arc in all of Bleach. But again, that doesn't mean I don't like it. I love it. This is the arc where Kubo found his series. I genuinely feel like this is the arc where Kubo found the perfect art style to draw his manga. It's the arc that sets up 90% of the story and characters that we love. Thematically is genius. So genius that after watching Soul Society, one would find the desire to like today's video and subscribe to Poke Soul. Anyway, onward to the recap of the Soul Society arc. Following the substitute Shinigami arc, we have the Soul Society arc. This arc is absolutely insane. From the plot reveals to the entire character arcs, the twists and turns, it turns out to be just incredible. The arc goes from chapter 71 all the way through chapter 183. The themes of the arc is duty, or more specifically resolve as a whole. But without all further ado, let's get into the recap of the Soul Society arc. After Ichigo and his friends enter the Koryu, they immediately begin to run. After all, the walls from the Koryu are falling in and being sucked up by the Kotatsu cleaner, which is way too fast for the main cast. And if it touches them, it will erase their spiritual presence. Luckily, Ohime reacts quickly enough and used her Senten Kenshun and blasted the party out of the Koryu, letting them enter one of the Serate's districts. After some wandering around, they find the Spirit Gate but is being defended by Jidambo, a literal giant wielding a battle axe for a Zanpakuto. Ohime and Chad immediately try to jump in, but Jibambo slams the ground with his Zanpakuto, making a concrete barrier around him and Ichigo. He wishes for a 1v1 against Ichigo, and as the fight starts, Jidambo does his special 10 attacks, but Ichigo blocks them all and ends the fight in a single blow, breaking his opponent's axe. After that, Jidambo cries about his axes, but proceeds to open the gate. However, a certain someone was waiting for them. Gin Ichimaru, captain of the third squad. Gin proceeds to sever one of Jidambo's arms. Immediately though, Ichigo leaps forward at Gin in an attempt to strike him, but Gin thinks fast and points his short sword at Ichigo, only for it to extend in a split of a second as Ichigo just barely manages to block it. But the force of the strike sent Ichigo flying into Jibambo, closing the the gate. Luckily, Ohime healed the severed arm, however afterwards they end up meeting with the town's elder, and Yoichi comes up with a plan to invade the Serate. However, it just so happens that a man named Ganju appears riding a boar right into the elder's home. As Ganju gets up, he makes eye contact with Ichigo wondering what the heck is a soul reaper doing here, and confronts him. A small fight breaks out between the two, and it ends up being taken outside rather quickly. The village elder tries to convince Ganju to stop saying Ichigo is a good Soul Reaper, but, but Ganju is convinced that all Soul Reapers are the same, that they are all bad. And as Ganju dashes at Ichigo, Chad being a literal Chad throws Ichigo his Zanpakuto. They fight for a few minutes, but as the clock strikes 9, Ganju calls his board and yells at Ichigo to rematch him, and then runs off with his gang. The next day, the party walked through a small village for some time, searching for the Shiba clan home. Which is very easy since they got a whole sign up there saying, hey, I'm over here. After getting closer, some bodyguards appear telling them to get lost. However, when they notice that Yoichi was with the group, they immediately apologize and guide them down to a tunnel to meet Kukaku Shiba, the leader of the Shiba clan. After asking for a favor and telling her the story, she understands it is going to assign a man to oversee the operation. As she opens the door to show who it is, it happens to be... Ganju Shiba. Yeah, the same Ganji from earlier. We then skip over to the Serate where we see Rukia getting transferred to a different cell with Renji escorting her and being told that her execution will be in 14 days. As Renji leaves, he runs into Captain Aizen of the 5th Squad. Aizen tells Renji that he thinks someone is behind this execution. Why should her execution be shortened so rapidly and why use the Sokyoku to execute a Soul Reaper below the rank of Captain? But before he can continue, a Captain meeting gets called. We 
We then transition back to Ichigo and Ganju clashing very angrily at each other, but Kukaku hits both of them and tells them to knock it off. She then leads them to a room, and as the door opens, they see a giant bloody cannon, and it literally goes to the sky. She hands Ichigo a Raishukaku core. That's definitely not how you pronounce it, I apologize. And she tells Ichigo to pour some of his spiritual energy into it. And he responds, how the heck do I do that? So Kukaku tells Ganju to show him how it's done, but Ichigo just refuses to be taught by him. Then once again, they both get rocked by Kukaku. Ganju eventually though does show Ichigo what happens when you pour your spiritual energy into it. It makes a shield around the core. This allows them to enter the barrier around the Serate that would otherwise keep them out. Following this, everyone begins to train relentlessly. It then cuts back to the Serate where we see Lieutenant Iba of the 7th Division, Renji Ibarai, heading to the Lieutenant meeting. As they get there, they see Momo, Lieutenant of the 5th Squad, and Lieutenant Rangiku of the 10th Squad showing up. She lets everyone know that it may take half the day for everyone to show up thanks to the chaos going around. Meanwhile, Ohime makes a just about perfect barrier, Uryu then makes a good but very narrow barrier, Chad is able to make an unstable but very strong barrier, but Ichigo is unable to make any form of barrier whatsoever. As it's getting late, dinner is made and the group is about to head off to go eat, but Ichigo stays behind to continue training. Everyone leaves except Ichigo and Ganju. Ichigo is getting a bit irritated by Ganju's presence, however Ganju decides to question Ichigo why he's going to go save the Soul Reaper. Do you owe her something? Ichigo replies no. Are you getting paid for it? Ichigo continues to reply no. Then why are you trying so hard? And he replies I owe her. She saved my life and I haven't repaid her yet. She gave her powers to me, a complete stranger, so I could save my family. I'm not some loser who would let her die without a fight. Ganju then rips the orb out of Ichigo's hand and gives him a tip on how to do it. Showed him how it worked, then afterwards he threw the orb right back at Ichigo and walks off. Meanwhile in the Serate, a captain's meeting is about to go down. We see Gin Ichimaru showing up late for the meeting, and as he enters he notices the captain of the 13th squad is missing, as he happened to be sick once again. The captains get a bit riled up as Gin had failed to kill Ichigo. Then the head captain of the Gotai 13 speaks up and tells the captains to settle down. He then asks Gin Ichimaru what his explanation was. Meanwhile, the entire party is eating when they feel a giant spiritual presence from Ichigo, causing quite the earthquake. The party runs immediately to the training room and as Kukaku opens the door, they see Ichigo making a barrier that is constantly growing. Kukaku then gives Ichigo advice to retain control, however in amazement he loses concentration once again and the orb breaks. Back to the captain's meeting, Gin replies he doesn't have an explanation. He was careless and is willing to take punishment of any kind. But before anything happens, the emergency goes off, saying there is an intruder in the Serate. Captain Zaraki immediately darts off with his lieutenant jumping onto his back, and he runs off. But as the captains leave, Aizen says to Gin, convenient time for the alarm to go off. Huh. And continues saying, do you really think you can get away with this? Moments before the invasion though, Ichigo and his friends are preparing to enter the Serate. When Ganju decides that he wants to join Ichigo, he expresses that his brother was killed by a Shinigami, and that he feels like he'll receive answers to his questions if he follows Ichigo. After this, they all enter the cannon with the orb. Following this, Kukaku starts chanting and upon finishing, the cannon goes off. They are immediately flying at a high speed in the air, but it's not enough as there's a second step in this launch. Ganju pulls out a scroll as the incantation of the second step and warns the party for everyone to evenly discharge energy into the orb or else everything will fail and the party will end up dead. As Ganju begins the incantation, arguing occurs between everyone and Ganju messes up and he is not able to complete the incantation in time. After colliding with the barrier, they manage to break through it though, but the orb's barrier breaks. Nobody is falling though. Quickly, everyone tries to grab each other before they begin to fall again, and Ganju grabs Ichigo. Chad grabs Ohime, but seeing that Uryu is about to fall out of the like, electric circle, he jumps towards Uryu, throws him at Ohime, but in the process he gets thrown out of the swirl. They end up getting separated into four groups, and luckily land safely, but in completely different areas. Ichigo and Ganju land together in an alley with two Soul Reapers. Chad lands in a tree. Yoichi lands safely as the Soul Reapers don't know where Yoichi even went. However, Ohime 
was partly injured from the impact, but Uryu performed first aid on her to help reduce the pain. Oh, he made Uryu though luckily land in a very quiet area, so there doesn't seem to be any Soul Reapers nearby. Meanwhile, we then see Ichigo and Ganju arguing over running or fighting, and Ganju dashes off, however he is chased off by an elegant Shinigami named Yumi Chika. Well, the other Shinigami named Ikaku Madarami does a lucky dance and begins to fight Ichigo. Meanwhile, Ganju ends up at a dead end, but he uses a spell named Seppa to turn the wall into sand. It allows him to pass through the wall, but what Ganju didn't know is he ran into an old execution grounds, a pit where criminals and hollows that were alive would be thrown down in. As Ganju is on the edge, Yumichika gives him a choice, either fall in the pit or be slain by his sword. Meanwhile, while Ikaku fights Ichigo, we see Ikaku take something from his hilt and put on the top of his eye to stop the bleeding. Right after he heals his injury, he asks Ichigo who trained him. Ichigo replies Kisuke Urahara, and Ikaku recognizes this name and decides to go all out as he screams, Extend! Huzuki Maru! Ikaku's sword then turns into a spear that can break into three chained parts. This catches Ichigo off guard as he gets hit in the right arm and they continue to fight. Eventually, Ichigo strikes Ikaku's spear, partly shattering the top end of it. And as Ikaku is looking at it, Ichigo immediately jumps back into action with high speed. Ikaku unprepared attempts to block, but ends up having his Zanpak toe break in two and is badly wounded. Ikaku refuses to give up though. Even if it meant death, he charges at Ichigo once again. Ichigo slices Ikaku, causing him to pass out mostly due to blood loss and insane injuries. Meanwhile, Yumichika uses his Shikai by Fuji Kujaku as it turns his blade into a five sickle blades on one hand. Ganju responds with a chili pepper smoke bomb which completely backfired on Ganju but he just ends up running away again just trying to escape Yumichika's elegancy. Back to Ichigo, he ends up using the healing ointment that Ikaku had on himself and Ikaku. As soon as Ikaku awakens, they talk a bit, but Ikaku specifically warns Ichigo of his captain, saying he will be after Ichigo because he is the strongest member. While all this is going on, Oryu and Ohime are just vibing on a roof, watching out for soul reapers and being stealthy. But as Ohime points out, a soul reaper appears behind her. Oryu reacts by saving Ohime from being sliced in two. Meanwhile, Ganju, who is very beat up right now, seems to be near his last stand. Before Yumichika attempts to finish off Ganju though, they hear Ichigo yelling for Ganju trying to figure out where he is. Ganju points out that if Ichigo is running around like that, he probably killed his friend Ikaku. Yumichika, shocked by his words and in denial, causes Ganju to have a brief moment to quickly grab some fireworkers that were behind him and throw them in Yumichika's face, being able to run away once again. However, Yumichika quickly recovers and continues to chase after Ganju. Eventually catching up to him, Yumichika flash steps behind Ganju and slashes him up in the back, sending him flying. Right now, Ganju is dangling off the edge as he is nearly about to fall into the old execution grounds. In quotations. Yumichika approaches Ganju and tells him to just die beautifully. But this was the moment Ganju was waiting for. He uses Seppa on the edge, which surprises Yumichika and turns the edge into sand, causing him to nearly fall off the edge. Eventually, Ganju manages to defeat Yumichika through these methods. We then cut to Uryu and Ohime fighting a Shinigami. Ohime counterattacks with her power, but the Soul Reaper destroys the attack and hurts one of Ohime's Shun Shun Rikas. The Soul Reaper appears right behind her, is about to slash Ohime again, until Uryu shoots an arrow at him, stopping him from hurting Ohime. The Soul Reaper activates his Shikai by saying, spread your wings, Suzaki Garasu. I did not pronounce that right either, but who cares about this Shinigami? He's an L. A walking L. As he says the line, he has his palm on the top of the blade, and pushes it down as it splits into multiple shuriken-like objects. The Soul Reaper then introduces himself as Jirobo. The Soul Reaper is easily outmatched though, and in his anger he attempts to attack Ohime once again, but Uryu quickly saves her once again, and finishes off the Soul Reaper with tons of arrows sending the Soul Reaper flying, destroying his Saketsu chain which means that he'll live, but he won't be able to be a Soul Reaper anymore. Meanwhile, Ichigo and Ganju end up being being surrounded by Shinigami, so they grab a hostage. However, because the hostage is a part of the fourth squad, also known as the Relief Squad, their opponents could literally care less. Luckily, an explosion of sorts happens, like someone blasted through the wall taking out half the Soul Reapers. Ichigo and Ganju take this opportunity to make a lucky break, and as the dust clears, we see that the one who caused the blast was none other than Chad, and with ease, Chad takes all the other Shinigami out. 
Meanwhile, all the way at the 4th Squad relief station, we see a captain named Kurosuchi trying to force answers out of Ikaku. Ikaku, however, isn't saying a word and claims to know nothing of the Ryoka. He was swiftly defeated before he even knew they were there. Kurosuchi then claims that he is going to punish him right now. However, as it happens, Ikaku's captain appears, Zuraki Kampachi. He confronts Kurosuchi, questions his authority to punish other squads other than his own members, and then Kurosuchi just leaves very angrily. Zuraki questions Ikaku wondering how strong this person was, what he looked like, and his objective. Ikaku gives all the details and hopes for his captain to have a good fight. We then cut back to Ichigo and Ganju, and then now introduce Soul Reaper Hanadaro. Ichigo then yells at Ganju for bringing the Soul Reaper along. Ganju replies that he was distracted and forgot that he was carrying him. Ganju and Ichigo now attempt to figure out where to go to get to the cell Ruki is being held in, and Hanataro overhears the conversation. Hanataro tells them where Rukia is, and about a secret pathway of getting there. They then end up going through the secret pathway, where we learn that Hanadaro wants for Rukia to be saved as well. Hanadaro tells them about how he met Rukia. Meanwhile, all the lieutenants are now together when a Soul Reaper confronts all the lieutenants to give them a damage report. He tells them about how the 3rd C and the 5th C of Squad 11 have been defeated. Meanwhile, we cut back to Ichigo and Gaju now exiting the secret pathway with Hanadaro mentioning that there is no direct way there, but that this is the closest exit. They look up to see a giant white castle of sorts that is the prison, and as they take in the view, there is a person on the stairs who is known as Renji Abarai. Immediately, Ichigo steps forward as they both draw their swords and both begin to battle. While Ichigo's allies are worried at first, Ichigo is actually pushing Renji back. And while Ichigo and Renji are in a sword class, Renji decides to ask Ichigo some questions. He asks, how do you intend to save Rukia? There are 12 more lieutenants and 13 more captains. If you want to save her, you have to defeat all of us. Do you really believe that you can do that? And Ichigo responds that he has to. That he will crush everyone. That anybody that gets in his way is going down. Upon hearing this, Renji just activates his Shikai, and as soon as he gets that power boost, it is revealed that before entering the world of the living, captains and lieutenants must suppress their power by five times, meaning this Renji is five times stronger than the Renji that Ichigo fought in the world of the living. Meanwhile, two lieutenants, Izuru and Momo, are searching for Renji. Izuru finds Renji's lieutenant badge in his room, but he hasn't informed any of the captains as he doesn't want Renji to get in trouble. Back to the fight between between Ichigo and Renji, Ichigo is mostly on the defensive. While they talk throughout the fight, we learn that Renji blames Ichigo for everything that's happened to Rukia. And as they are fighting, Ichigo is starting to see a pattern in Renji's movements. He realizes that Zabimaru can only extend three times, meaning if he can dodge the third one, then he can win. However, Renji catches on and strikes Ichigo easily before doing a final strike. However, Ichigo remembers Uhara's training about resolve, being able to swing a sword not with fear but with intent. Ichigo then manages to catch Renji's Zanpakuto and attacks before Renji could again, breaking his sword and putting a giant slash down his chest sending him flying into the wall. We then skip to a flashback of Renji's past. It is him as a kid when he met Rukia. We see that they met when they were scavenging for food in the slum districts. Rukia was strong and so was Renji. They have stronger spiritual pressures than the rest of their friends. They often fought and played as kids, but as they grew older, some of their friends sadly died. In fact, they were the only two remaining in their group. And they decided to become soul reapers since life is supposed to be better in the Serate. While they are in the academy, Rukia ends up being adopted by Byakuya Kuchiki, Captain of the 6th squad. Renji tries cheering Rukia up, saying she won't have to go hungry and she gets to be part of a noble clan and that she's now like instantly passing and graduating from the academy. However, in truth, he didn't want to let her go, but he didn't want to get in her way either. As it returns to the present, we then see Renji walks up to Ichigo and yells at him to please save Rukia. Both Ichigo and Renji fall to the floor due to their injuries, and Ganju and Hanadaro run up and try to get Ichigo's body out of there, since about five people are heading towards them, so they gotta hide. They manage to hide, and some of the lieutenants see Renji's body. They end up choosing to save Renji rather than chasing after Ichigo and the others, putting Renji's life above catching the criminals. Following their escape back to the secret pathway, Hanadaro begins to heal Ichigo. Meanwhile, Byakuya tells the lieutenants to throw Renji in a cell, calling him a fool for challenging Ichigo alone and losing. Momo tries to speak up, but Kira stops her and apologizes to Byakuya. Then, after Byakuya leaves, Gin steps in and tells him that he will get word to the 4th squad. Eventually, as Gin leaves, Toshiro then sneaks up on Momo, warning her of the 3rd squad, and not to trust them so easily. Following this, the head captain Yamamoto speaks to all of the captains telling them they are allowed to use their full power. While Hanadaro heals Ichigo, he says that he thought this 
wound was fatal but it's very shallow, thanks to a mask that protected him. It's like a hollow. Why does Ichigo have it? Meanwhile, after everything that's happened, Momo's a bit worried, so she ends up going to Captain Aizen where he's in his room writing something. Aizen reassures her that everything will work out, while Momo dozes off to fall asleep on accident. As all this is going on, Aizen leaves to go on a walk, and in the morning, Momo wakes up and notices the time. She has to get going, but as she is taking a shortcut, she screams. It was so loud, it alerted a ton of Shinigami and lieutenants. Everyone comes running to see what happens, and on the wall is Captain Aizen dead with a Zanpak Do shoved right through his chest. Everyone is shocked at the brutality of it, and that one of the 13 captains is dead. Ginichimaru walks up on them and asks what all the noise is for. Momo accuses Gin and attempts to attack him, but Izuru Kira jumps in the way and blocks it. Momo argues with Kira to get out of the way, but Kira refuses. Momo activates her Shikai, snap, Tobiyame, and causes a small explosion. Izuru tries reasoning with her, but she charges up another fireball, so Kira decides to dodge it. Kira then activates his Shikai, show yourself, Wabisuke, and attempts to attack Momo. But Toshiro gets in the way between the two, blocking both of their attacks, and tells the other lieutenants to arrest them. Toshiro tells everyone to clear the area, but Gin stays, and Toshiro then turns to Gin and tells him, if you dare make Momo bleed, I will kill you. Meanwhile, Ichigo is now fully healed, and they leave to go save Rukia. While all this is going on, Chad was just having a dream about the past when he first met Ichigo in a warehouse, with Shinigami banging on the door. Quickly, Chad beats six Shinigami in an instant and ends up learning where Rukia is from those defeated Shinigami. Unknown to Chad, though, a lieutenant spots him running towards them, and she tells her captain, who is on the roof, laid back with a straw hat, searching for the One Piece. Wait, what? Wrong show. My bad. Anyway, the captain gets ready for battle as his old man, aka Yamamoto, command him to do so. So. Meanwhile, as Ichigo makes his way toward the top, they all sense an extremely heavy spiritual pressure coming from somewhere. As this is happening, Momo receives a letter addressed to her from Captain Aizen, containing the individual responsible for Aizen's death. Ichigo and the others attempt to run, but the spiritual pressure is still heavy on them. Ichigo feels a staring presence and looks in the direction it's coming from. It is Captain Zoraki of the 11th Squad. Watching them down, Zoraki calls out Ichigo's name, making sure it's him and introduces himself as Captain Kapachi Zoraki of the 11th Division the same division that Ikaku Madarame was from. Ichigo looks behind him to see Hanaro knocked out by Kampachi's spiritual pressure, and yells at Ganju to get him and save Rukia himself, that he will hold off this captain. Zoraki sees Ichigo is weaker than him, so he offers him a handicap. Ichigo gets the first swing. Zoraki tries hard to convince Ichigo to swing first, and after some talking, Ichigo finally does so, landing a strike on Zoraki's chest with no cut at all. The sword was stopped by his body alone. And at that point, Zoraki pushes Ichigo back with just his arm, where he explains that when two spiritual pressures collide, the weaker one takes the impact, meaning that Ichigo's sword isn't putting in out enough pressure to cut Zoraki's passive pressure leak. It's gotten to the point where Ichigo's own hands are bleeding. I mean, Zoraki's just a Chad at this point. Speaking of Chad, Chad runs into the third seat of Squad 8, and in a single punch, Chad sends him flying like he's nothing. We then see a captain land before Chad, and the captain introduces himself to be Shunsui Kyaku, captain of the 8th squad, in a very flowery way. At first, Shunsui offers to have a drink with Chad instead of fighting, however, Chad declines as he is in a hurry. So they end up fighting, Shunsui dodges Chad's attacks with ease, and with a single tap on Chad's shoulder, he sends Chad flying. Through their conversation in the fight, we learn that Chad isn't saving Rukia because of their relationship, but because his friend Ichigo is putting his life on the line, and so he is going to as well. Chad then thinks about the past when he used to be a big baby and a bully, but his abuelo showed him his errors and taught him to be strong. A few years later, Chad saves Ichigo by becoming a punching bag. We then fast forward once again to where Chad is kidnapped by some gangsters, and Ichigo luckily shows up and curb stomps one of the gangsters. Then Ichigo pulls out his phone and calls an ambulance for five people, as he is pointing and counting to the gangsters. Ichigo then proceeds to beat them all up and makes a promise to Chad that he will fight for him 
him if Chad fights for him. And if there is something he wants to protect with his life, he would do the same. Meanwhile, with ease, Shinsui just knocks out Chad like it's nothing. Nineo then runs to Shinsui to tell him some important news and knows his Chad is still alive. She offers to finish him off, however, they take him as a prisoner instead of killing him. Meanwhile, Ichigo notices that Chad's spiritual pressure has gone very weak, and this reinforces his will to fight. Getting rid of his fear for now, Ichigo dashes at Kampachi instantly and manages to get a cut on Kampachi's chest. Ichigo then apologizes to Kampachi, saying he just had to strengthen his resolve. Kampachi notices that Ichigo drew blood and for some reason smiles really big. We then cut to some of the captains talking to each other, asking if Captain Aizen is really dead. The captain of the fourth squad checks him and confirms that he is dead. Ichigo learns throughout the fight that Kampachi holds himself back as much as possible in every fight, and that he doesn't have a Shikai. Kampachi finally leaps forward and stabs right through Ichigo's sword, cutting him. Ichigo's Zanpakuto then breaks in two, and Ichigo is now on the ground bleeding as Kampachi is walking away from the fight. Ichigo wants to win and not die, and luckily for him, Zangetsu hears his call and questions Ichigo. Does he want to live? or win. Ichigo says that he wants to win, so Zangetsu takes him to his inner world and throws a nameless Zanpakuto that has no power. Zangetsu then introduces Ichigo to someone we know as White, who looks just like Ichigo but is completely white. Zangetsu tells Ichigo that if he can beat White, he can have his Zanpakuto back. Ichigo accepts and attempts to fight White. The fight starts with White taking the first attack. Ichigo barely blocks it but gets sent flying back. Ichigo realizes that Zangetsu is one heck of a Zanpakuto compared to a normal Soul Reaper's blade. White then tells Ichigo that he never attempted to bond with Zangetsu and only drew on his power as a convenience. He took his power for granted. Ichigo has a revelation and wants to fight with Zangetsu again, saying he will try to learn about him, all about him. As Zangetsu hears him, he quickly switches White and Ichigo's swords with Ichigo, now holding Zangetsu, and the soulless Zanpakuto now in the hands of White. Ichigo returns to the world getting up from his injuries with his Zanpakuto fully intact, as if it never broke. Kampachi then turns around to see Ichigo standing there with much stronger spiritual pressure than earlier, and he is surprised. Ichigo dashes right at him and gets a big cleaving strike on the right shoulder. Kampachi quickly draws his Zanpakuto and barely manages to block the second attack from Ichigo. Ichigo begins to start winning against Kampachi. however Kampachi decides to take off his eye patch, and all of a sudden his spiritual pressure spikes. Kampachi explains to him that the eye patch actually consumes his power to help reduce it so he can have a more fair or longer fight. Zangetsu then lets Ichigo borrow some more of his power, and Ichigo's spiritual pressure spikes. Ichigo and Kampachi charge up for a final attack, both of the final attacks causing them to pass out. However, Ichigo is declared the winner as Kampachi's Zanpakuto was snapped in two. Kampachi's lieutenant then takes Kampachi away, while Yoichi does the same. Meanwhile, Ganju and Hanadaro are about to invade the prison, that, and they get to the final door where Rukia is behind, and Ganju has Hanadaro open it, since he has a key for it. As Ganju walks in, he notices who the Soul Reaper is, and Rukia also notices that he has the Shiba clan marking on him. Ganju then explains that she was the one who killed his brother. Rukia admits it, that his brother died by her hands when they had to fight that hollow, but their conversation ends short as they feel an immense spiritual pressure appear behind them, belonging to Byakuya Kuchiki. As Byakuya is walking up the bridge, Ganju is in denial. Hanadaro offers to try and delay Byakuya as Ganju may attempt to escape with Rukia, however Ganju realizes that Hanadaro is scared, so scared that after thinking for a moment for himself, he decides that Hanadaro should escape with Rukia while he attempts to hold Byakuya off. Ganju confronts Byakuya saying he will have to get past him before he can get to Rukia. In this moment, Ichigo wakes up while Yoichi shows Ichigo that some of his organs would have been destroyed if it wasn't for this hollow mask that was in his pocket. Ichigo then remembers seeing it earlier as it also saved him once before, and as he wanted to keep it as a good luck charm, but Hanadaro threw it out. Yoichi tells him to give her the mask right now. They continue to talk when Yoichi decides to show Ichigo her original form, and then she transforms into an S-tier waifu. I mean a woman, sorry. Yoichi shows Ichigo a rare artifact that if you pour your spiritual energy into it, you can fly. Then all of a sudden, they feel strong spiritual presence, and Ichigo realizes that it is near Ganju and Hanadaro. So even though he is wounded, he dashes off and takes flight in hopes to save them. 
Meanwhile, Ganju proceeds to run straight at Byakuya with his sword, and Ganju tanks a giant blow up his back, still standing somehow. Byakuya then draws his sword, activates his Shikai, and as his sword disappears, a ton of cherry blossoms start to swirl around him. Only they are small blades. They all instantly cut up Ganju and knock him out. As Byakuya goes in for the finishing blow, a white-haired captain named Ukitake stops the attack. Ukitake asks why does Byakuya have his Zanpakuto drawn in this area, and that is not allowed to. But Byakuya responds that there is a wartime exemption. Ukitake is taken aback by this. How can a few Ryoka be that important? Then he asks Byakuya, did they kill Aizen? But before he can respond, a strong spiritual presence starts to draw closer to them. It's Ichigo Kurosaki who lands right in front of Rukia, checking up on his friends, and then he immediately starts to look at Byakuya. Byakuya flash steps right behind Ichigo, however Ichigo can see Byakuya moving and blocks his attempt at a one-hit kill. Byakuya then sees that he can't use that trick anymore, so he's going to use his Shikai again. But Yoichi intervenes, wrapping Byakuya's sword in some sort of binding wrap. Ichigo thanks Yoichi for coming to help, but asks her to stay out of this, and that he can beat him on his own. However, Yoichi thinks Ichigo is a fool for this and strikes him right in the stomach wound, knocking him out. She then runs away and promises to Byakuya that in three days Ichigo will be stronger than him. After they get away, Byakuya lets Ukitake handle the criminals, and Ukitake thanks Hanaro for attempting to save Rukia. Meanwhile, Ohime and Uryu are currently pretending to be new Shinigamis. They have a perverted experience with one of the CA officers, but everything seems to be going fine. This is until we see someone has spied on them. Captain Kurosuchi, who is blended in with the wall, overhears their conversations. We then cut back to Ichigo and Yoichi. They are now hiding, and Yoichi is waiting for Ichigo to wake up so that she can train him. After after a few hours go by, Ichigo does wake up, but he lashes out at Yoichi for taking him out of the fight. Yoichi then tells him that he had no chance, but that in three days of training, he might have a chance. We then fast forward a bit, and Yoichi teaches Ichigo about the concept of the second release, a Bankai, normally taking 10 years to learn, however Ichigo is going to learn in Kisuke's method, which only takes three days. While this conversation happens, Ohime and Uryu, who are running throughout the Serate, are looking around, when, while they are running, they run into a Soul Reaper, and he asks them who they are and what squad they are with. Uryu and Ohime he may claim to be in the 11th squad, but so is the Soul Reaper, and he questions them, we're the combat unit, so why are you running without your Zanpak toe? The Soul Reaper then grabs at Ohime's Shinigami robes to see that inside the robes it says that it's the 12th squad, and then he continues to question who they are. But some of the 12th squad roll up since they were harassing another member of the 12th squad. Uryu still questions their strange behavior, as the 11th squad member was in his total right to be questioning who they are. Uryu quickly begins to connect the dots, and he yells at Ohime made to get away from them just in time. As he says that, a big explosion happens right where they were, and all the Soul Reapers die since they had bombs attached to them. Luckily, Ohime reacted in time and used her shield to defend her, Ryu, and the member of Squad 11. We then see Captain Kurosuchi appear and is amazed by the shield. He then asks Ohime if she would like to become a research subject. Ryu interjects with his bow, and Mayuri instantly knows that he is a Quincy, but has absolutely no interest in him. Captain Kurosuchi then introduces himself, and then Uryu realizes the strength of his opponent. He then yells at the now awake Soul Reaper to take Ohime and run, or else he will shoot him. The Soul Reaper grabs Ohime and begins to run. Uryu quickly realizes that he is at a disadvantage, since Kurosuchi's lieutenant is also right there, but she isn't moving, so she may not be the combat type. Uryu decides to fire an arrow at Mayuri to see if his lieutenant reacts. He fires a couple of arrows while moving around, and luckily it seems to be the lieutenant isn't going to join in the, on the fight, but Mayuri managed to evade all the arrows with ease. Mayuri is impressed by Yuri's ability for his age, however he wants Ohime as a test subject so he activates his Shikai Akasiko Jizo. His sword forms in like a squid of sorts but it's just really ugly, and as Uryu is about to move, the lieutenant jumps into action and grabs him. This is when Kurosuchi attacks Uryu, cutting through his lieutenant to strike him. Uryu's back is right now to the wall, as he doesn't really know what to do. He loses the ability to move his entire arm thanks to the Zanpakuto that struck him. Mayuri's lieutenant Nemu's lung has been damaged, so she ends up asking Mayuri for help, however Mayuri, instead of helping her, walks up to her and curb stomps her, yelling at her saying your body isn't going to break that easily. Uryu speaks up but is quickly shot down by Mayuri, saying that he created her and he won't be mocked. The power of Mayuri's Zanpakuto is that fact that it immobilizes 
the victim. Kurosuchi walks up to Ryu and stabs him right in the gut once again, and he still feels the pain. Mayuri then bashes Ryu's pride and talks about all of the experiments he has done to the Quincy's, of how he humiliated them, and actually talked bad about his last victim, which was none other than Ryu's grandfather. This pisses Ryu off. As Kurosuchi explains what happened to Ryu's grandpa, he is trying to remember his name. Ryu says that his name was Soken Ishida, and that he was his teacher and his grandfather. And then he says, on my honor as a Quincy, I am going to kill you. Uryu then stands up and Mayuri realizes that Uryu is using an advanced Quincy technique called Ranso Tengai. It allows the user to create bundles of reishi and spirit particles into tons of threads allowing one to fight even if their body is fully mangled and broken. Mayuri is amazed by this, since out of all the Quincy's he tested on, none of them could do this technique. So he says, I'm not going to take you, I'm going to take you back alive. You will be a part of my experiments along with that girl. Ryu breaks a piece off his gauntlet, and then all of a sudden, his spiritual pressure skyrockets to the point where you can't physically see his energy. He transforms. His bow looks much more advanced and has a wing of pure spiritual energy condensed. Ryu gets a flashback of when he was given the glove, the Senrei Shuto. It can absorb reishi at a really fast rate and density, but when you put it on a train within a week, you won't be able to take it off. If you do, it will give you immense power for just a brief moment, but the flame will burn you, and your Quincy powers will be lost. Uryu's powers have become very immense. Kurosuchi is absolutely amazed but knows that this is beyond the human body's limit. Uryu immediately fires a quick arrow, however Kurosuchi is barely able to dodge. Then Uryu instantly appears right above Mayuri and fires an explosive arrow that badly damages him. Mayuri gets very pissed off and immediately goes into his Bonkai. A giant worm-like baby appears that sprays poison gas. Uryu fires a shot and blows a giant hole in Mayuri that nearly separates his chest from his waist, also blowing up the Bankai worm in half. Uryu had won the fight, but Mayuri then stabs himself and turns himself into this goo stuff that can't attack or be attacked, but will one day reform. This allows Mayuri to survive, however sadly the poison does reach Uryu and he feels his body begin to shut down slowly. As Uryu is dying, Nemu speaks up saying she has an antidote on her. Nemu thanks Uryu for being concerned and gives it to him. Nemu then tells him to leave quickly before the guards show up and he does that. However, as Uryu walks up the stairs of Rukia's prison, we see his wing of pure spiritual energy getting smaller and smaller and his Ranso Tengai is wearing off. As soon as Uryu gets to the top of the stairs, he meets a captain that was waiting for him. Captain Tozen. This captain knocks Uryu out in a single hit. There is now only Ichigo and Yoichi left. Yoichi brings out a doll looking thing. She tells Ichigo that if he stabs his Zanpakuto into it that would bring the Zanpakuto spear out of the sword and manifest it into reality. This will allow Ichigo to train with him but she also does warn him that if failure occurs it will most likely result in his death. Ichigo immediately stabs the doll and Zangetsu appears right behind Ichigo. Yoichi asks Zangetsu if they can start training right now, and they can. All of a sudden, hundreds of swords appear around the area, and Ichigo has to find Zangetsu and strike the spirit form of Zangetsu in order to achieve Bankai. The fight between Zangetsu and Ichigo begins. We then cut to the jail where Renji, Momo, and Izuru are being held captive. Renji breaks out of his cell. Momo stays in her cell but looks content, and Izuru looks terrible, but his captain approaches him telling him to come with him. Meanwhile, in a relief cell, there lies Uryu, Ganju, and Chad. Uryu is confused as to why they were treated and held captive instead of being outrightly killed. However, Chad responds that apparently one of the captains was murdered, and since they are Ryoka, they are the prime suspects. Meanwhile, the Soul Reaper who ran away with Ohime is named Makizo, and he took Ohime back to his barracks, only to end up meeting Ikaku, Yumichika, and Kampachi, all in the same room. Kampachi has a feeling that if he sticks with Ohime, he may get to see Ichio again, so he ends up kind of teaming up with Ohime. Meanwhile, in the same moment, Toshiro and Rangiku receive a message from a Soul Reaper alerting them that Renji, Momo, and Kira are missing from their cells. Toshiro makes up his mind and decides to go find them. Meanwhile, while this whole day has been going on, Ichigo is training until Zangetsu fades and the doll that he stabbed earlier falls. Yoichi tells him day one is over, and as Ichigo is resting, Toshiro is currently 
confronting Kira and Gein. He knew that Gein had to be over there, and that he was there to protect Momo. Momo, however, does arrive shortly, but instead of pointing her sword at Gein, she points it at Toshiro. She reads part of the letter to Toshiro, and then proceeds to attack Toshiro while having a breakdown of sorts, and Toshiro is confused on how she fell for this trap. Toshiro then quickly realizes that this has to be a part of Gein's plan, so he decides to quickly knock Momo out so she doesn't have to fight, and then prepares to fight Ginichimaru. Immediately activating his Shikai, Hiru Maru, an ice dragon is now swirling around them. Gin responds with the his Shikai Shinso, and as all of a sudden a blade comes flying out of his coat, and Toshiro barely manages to dodge this blade. However, quickly he realizes that Momo was right behind him, and the blade was not aiming at Toshiro, but Momo. Luckily for Momo, Ragiku shows up in the niche of time and blocks the attack with her Zanpakuto just barely. Meanwhile, Rukia's execution has been moved for tomorrow, and Toshiro plans to stop the execution. We then cut to Ichigo's training for his Bankai, only to get interrupted by Renji who blasts through the wall. Renji tells Ichigo that her execution is tomorrow, and that he needs a place to also train for Bankai. Meanwhile, Byakuya is with Ukitake out of breath, yelling at Byakuya saying it's tomorrow and Byakuya just doesn't seem to care. Ukitake thinks it's literally heartless of Byakuya to have this mindset. And while this is going on, Rukia thinks about the past of a lieutenant named Kai and Shiba. He was the only one who looked at Rukia at face value, and not because of her royal status. He wasn't afraid to talk to her, he wasn't afraid to treat her like she was a normal person. However, Kayan's wife got possessed by a hollow, and ended up killing multiple soul reapers. Kayan, Ukitake, and Rukia ended up following Kayan's wife into a forest, and they manage to find where she's hiding, but sadly, it, she just has no more control of this body. Kain asks the other two not to join the fight, as he wants to challenge the creature himself. Kain actually shows to be quite powerful, being able to cut the hollow fairly quickly and precisely, but as he makes contact with the tentacle of the hollow, his Zampa toe breaks. Rukia wants to jump in and help, but Ukitake stops her saying don't ruin his pride. We then see Kain lose and end up getting possessed by the hollow himself, as Ukitake attempts to fight the hollow, but only after a few seconds Ukitake begins to feel really sick. The hollow takes advantage of this and run towards Rukia Rei to kill her. She drops draws her sword, and ends up being the one to kill Kayan and the Hollow with him. Rukia cries over this as Kayan thanks her for killing him. As Rukia returns back to the present, she is now being escorted out of her cell, while Zaraki breaks Chad, Ganju, and Uryu out of prison. Following these two events, most of the captains are getting ready, and some went to the execution grounds, while others went to stop the remaining Ryoka. We then see two captains, Tozen and Kamamura, and their two lieutenants, Mr. Ida and Shuhei, waiting for the Ryoka, but it just so happens that Kampachi is with them. Kampachi fights the two captains, while Shuhei and Iba fight Ikaku and Yumichika. The fight between the captains starts with Tozen activating his Shikai, immediately thousands of swords appear and they fly right into Kampachi but he just takes it all like it was absolutely nothing. Meanwhile, Renji, who is now running around the Serate, is attempting to make his way to free Rukia, in hopes to help delay her execution, or even possibly to save her. But sadly, Byakuya appears before Renji, and combat begins. Byakuya tries to use Senka on him, a Shunpo technique that allows the user to Shunpo and then destroy the Saketsu chain. However, Renji explains that he knows all of Byakuya moves, and easily avoids the attack. As the fight continues, it eventually leads to Renji activating Bong, a giant skeleton-like snake appears behind Renji, and Byakuya immediately is forced to go on the defensive, attempting to learn what his Bankai is capable of. As Renji swings it, Byakuya dodges it fairly easily by just having a little bit of distance. Renji does manage to get hit in and get Byakuya down to one knee, however now he is with a clear understanding of the Bankai that Renji has. Byakuya then activates his Bankai, Senbon Zakura Kageyoshi, as he drops his sword and multiple pillar-like versions of his sword appear around him, and they all break into petals and cut Renji down. Renji is now barely alive and claims that it is not over, but Byakuya's petals turn into a sword and land before Renji, blocking his movement. Renji attempts to keep on fighting but eventually passes out due to the extreme blood loss that he had. We then cut to Rukia who is on the bridge being escorted as Gin shows up. He, Gin ends up giving Rukia a false sense of hope and shaking her resolve, making her want to live after accepting her death, like the snake he is. 
While Kampachi fights the two captains, Tozen explains the three ways to become a captain, and that Kampachi did it in the most peace-breaking way, by killing the former Squad 11 captain in front of 200 people. Tozen then realizes that he must eliminate Kampachi to restore the peace. Tozen then uses his Bankai, while multiple circles form around him at first, they then spread across the field and encase everybody in a black orb. Anyone who is in the Tozen space loses all of their senses. Meaning right now, Kampachi cannot hear, see, or sense. Meanwhile, Rukia has entered the execution grounds with the execution beginning shortly, but only the 2nd, 4th, and 8th squad shows up. As time passes, even the captain of the 6th squad appears to also watch the execution. Before the execution continues, Yamamoto asks Rukia if she has any last words, and she does. Meanwhile, the fight between Yumichika and Chuhei is looking like Yumichika is going to lose. This is until Yumichika reveals his Zanpakuto's real power, as it's actually a Kido-based Zanpakuto instead of physical. While Yumichika shifts the odds in his favor, Kampachi is starting to evade Tozen's attacks. Even though he is lacking the sense of sight, sound, and sense of spiritual pressure, he is going all by the touch of his blade. Kampachi gives Tozen an opening and lets Tozen stab him with his sword, and as Kampachi gets stabbed, he grabs grabs a hold of Tozen's sword and regains his senses for a moment. This allows him to cleave into Tozen and force Tozen to retreat for just a moment, just suffering a really bad wound. Tozen attempts to attack again, but Kapachi catches his sword before it even hits him, and cleaves him once again. This is when Tozen's Bankai breaks as he can no longer concentrate on it with his injuries. Kapachi then attempts to finish Tozen off, but Kamamura steps in and catches the blade using his helmet. The helmet then breaks and it shows that Kamamura is actually a human humanoid animal. Kampachi isn't really surprised though, he just wants to fight. Kamamura then activates his Bankai, Kokujo, Tengen Mio, a giant samurai appears behind Kamamura. While this is happening, we see Toshiro and Rangiku heading out to the execution grounds in hopes to stop it. And same goes for Okutake, who is bringing a special weapon. Hanadaro saves Renji and asks if he can go save Rukia once again. Renji accepts this and heads out. Rukia requests Yamamoto to allow the Ryoka to leave unharmed, and the Sokyoku gets released as Rukia says, herself that she is ready. The Sokyoku starts to take its form as a giant phoenix, and Rukia says her goodbyes to everyone. But as the bird is charging at her, a clash happens. She opens her eyes to see Ichigo standing right there with his sword behind his back, just casually blocking the phoenix. The bird then attempts to charge up a second attack, and Rukia yells at Ichigo to get out of the way, as he won't be able to block a second time. But then all of a sudden, Captain Ukitake shows up and binds the Sokyoku, and Captain Shinsui joins them. Ichigo attacks the phoenix and destroys it, breaking Rukia out with ease. Every captain is extremely surprised by this. Ichigo then tells Rukia that he is going to save everyone. Then Renji shows up, and Ichigo just yeets Rukia towards him. Renji is extremely caught off guard, but barely manages to catch Rukia. Renji then is told to dash off and he does so with Rukia as fast as he can and then the lieutenants attempt to give chase but are quickly all stopped by Ichigo Kurosaki knocking them all out in just a blink of an eye with just his fists. Byakuya then attempts to attack Ichigo, but Ichigo manages to block it. Ichigo and Byakuya begin to fight while Yamamoto confronts Shinsui and Ukitake, that they have dishonored the role as captain and will receive punishment. Shinsui and Ukitake book it out of there, meanwhile Soifone chases down Ukitake's lieutenant, but as she reaches for her, Yoichi pops out and grabs her, pulling her away to a different area so they can fight. Soifone calls Yoichi foolish for ruining her clan's reputation for helping the Ryoka, and she ends up calling for the stealth squad. However, as the stealth squad completely surround Yoichi, instantly Yoichi just takes them all down thanks to her complete mastery of the flash step. We then cut to Shunsui and Ukitake getting far away from the execution grounds, getting halted quickly by Yamamoto. Yamamoto is disappointed and he pities these fools for dishonoring the Gotai 13. They all draw their weapons and prepare to fight. We then cut back to Renji running as fast as possible with Rukia in his arms. Rukia protests to Renji for helping her, however Renji tells her to shut up and explains to her why Ichigo wanted to save her. She then stops protesting and says sorry. Meanwhile, Soifone activates her Shikai, Suzumibachi, when she lands a hit on a body part and makes a mark, and if Soifone can hit the same spot again, they immediately die. Yoichi gets marked up a lot by Soifone's Shikai, and Soifone claims that she isn't even at full power, as she has a brand new technique that has never been named before. Yoichi, however, says she knows it. Its name is Shunko, and she created it years ago. The technique causes Kido to draw power to the arms and legs, which causes it to explode 
flowed outwards, meaning any fabric around the back and shoulders would get blown off. Yoichi then activates Shunko as a defense aura appears around her. Zoifun is extremely upset about this, wondering how she is not stronger than Yoichi even though an entire century has passed. We learn that Yoichi was the previous captain of the second squad, or known as the Stealth Force. Yoichi liked Zoifun's skills and trained her personally. Zoifun saw Yoichi as an ideal and a great friend, but then she was betrayed by Yoichi as she claims, for vanishing without saying anything, and she lost all respect for her. Soyphone then breaks out in tears, wondering why Yoichi didn't take Soyphone with her. Meanwhile, in Byakuya's fight, he eventually activates his Shikai. Ichigo immediately blasts all the pedals away with his Zanpakuto's power, called Getsugo Tensho. So then, finally, Byakuya uses his Bankai, Zenbone Zakura Kageyoshi. Hundreds of millions of pedals start to swirl around Byakuya, and Ichigo then attempts to attack to see how strong it gets. He easily gets blocked and cut up badly. Ichigo then tells Byaki to watch closely as he is about to show him his Bankai. Byaki is confused as to how, however, much to Byaki's surprise, Ichigo says the words Bankai. As his spiritual pressure instantly explodes and skyrockets, Ichigo's Zanpakuto becomes a lot more thin and seemingly lighter. Tensa Zangetsu. Byaki gets riled up as this man basically pulls out a normal Zanpakuto and is basically crapped on all the things the Soul Reapers hold sacred. Almost instantly as Byaki is about to attack, Ichigo appears right in front of Byaki with his sword at his neck, but then withdrew it. Byaki says that it was just luck or a miracle that happened and that his Zanpakuto could never be a Bankai. Fighting then ensues as Ichigo is quite easily dodging all of his attacks. Eventually, Byaki uses a secret ability known as Senkei. Tons of swords appear around them marking an arena of swords. Byakuya summons one of the swords and swears to kill Ichigo by his own hands. As Byakuya is about to finish Ichigo off, all of a sudden a mask begins to form over Ichigo's face. This masked Ichigo easily catches Byakuya's Zanpakuto and easily strikes Byakuya dealing a strong slash. This mask laughs at how Ichigo is so pathetic at being able to use Bankai as his own body was breaking down from his own spiritual pressure. Byakuya then asks if it is a hollow, but it doesn't say. Then Ichigo seems to have regained some control of his body and attempts to rip the mask off and luckily succeeds. Byaki is surprised that Ichigo ripped it off, even though if he kept it, he could have won the fight easily. Byaki says to Ichigo, neither of us has much strength left, so the next clash shall decide the battle. They each then prepare for a final move and clash, both receiving heavy hits, but luckily Ichigo stands victorious. Byaki then answers Ichigo's original question for not saving Rukia. He says, says that it was to uphold the law. Lawbreakers must face justice and be punished for their crimes. Family is nothing next to the law. However, Ichigo then claims, well, if I was in your shoes, I would fight the law. Byaki is surprised by this, but also lets Ichigo know that he won't pursue Rukia anymore as he has lost. Meanwhile, Toshiro and Rangiku have entered Central 46 and find out that the entirety of the council has been murdered a long time ago. As we see Toshiro turn around and see Izuru, he then gives chase along with Rangiku trying to stop him, However, Izuru threatens Toshiro a bit by telling him he should be protecting Momo. Toshiro gets scared of what's going on and tells Rangiku to continue to chase Izuru as he goes and finds Momo. Rangiku and Izuru come to a stop and Rangiku asks why he is doing this, but he just says, I was tasked to stop you by Gin, and he proceeds to give no further detail. Izuru then pulls his blade, activating his Shikai. Meanwhile, Momo sees all the dead Central 46 members while Gin finds her and leads her to Aizen. Momo immediately is shocked that Aizen is still alive and runs to him to give him a hug as Aizen stabs her and leaves her on the ground to bleed out. Toshio makes it to see Captain Aizen is alive with Gin next to him and then he sees Momo bleeding. It is then revealed that Aizen has been deceiving everyone about his true identity and motive. Toshiro immediately jumps into Bankai but is instantly cut down, knocking Toshiro out. This is when Unohana shows up as she had suspicions about Aizen. Aizen reveals his Zanpakuto, Kyoka Sugetsu, as its true power is perfect hypnosis. He can manipulate anyone's senses as long as they have seen the released form of it. It's also revealed that Tozen has been working with Aizen and Gin. Aizen then uses some binding wraps that teleports him, and then we see Tozen who is waiting for Renji using the binding wraps on Renji and Rukia. 
The five individuals all appear on the execution grounds once again, and Aizen tells Renji to leave Rukia there and go. Unahano's lieutenant uses Aikido technique to tell everyone the truth. Renji tries to fight Aizen but gets put down to one knee very easily. Renji is about to be finished but Ichigo makes it just in time and blocks the attack from hitting Renji. Ichigo and Renji agree to an alliance and Renji is going to attempt to use a move that should give Ichigo an opening. The entire ground begins to shake and the broken pieces of Zabimaru animate and dash at Aizen. Ichigo uses this moment to run in as soon as the move hits and swings at Aizen with his full power, acting like number one. However, Aizen stops Ichigo's sword with just just one whole finger, and then blasts Ichigo back, inflicting tons of wounds on him and causing him to fall to the ground. Then in an instant, Aizen appears behind Renji and slashes Renji down to the ground, knocking him out. Aizen notices that Ichigo is still conscious, but just barely. He thanks Ichigo for doing his part and making Aizen's job easy. Ichigo is confused by this, and then Aizen tells him that he has planned out everything, and tells him of his plan to break Soul Reaper's limits called holification. He then reveals that an item that can defy reality called a Hokyoku. It's a very dangerous item that can't be destroyed, that Kisuke had implanted within Rukia. Kamamura then shows up and attempts to attack Aizen but fails and then activates Bankai and attempts to fight Aizen. But then Aizen uses Hado number 90, Korohitsugi, which is considered to be forbidden. This spell encases Kamamura and instantly defeats him. Aizen then reveals that he had killed Central 46 so that he could control it, so that he could try to execute Rukia, since the only way to remove the Hokyoku is by killing the Soul Reaper with immense power such as the Sokyoku, or with a tool that Aizen has managed to recreate. Then using this tool, he pulls out the Hokyoku from Rukia's chest and tells Gin to kill her. However, Biyaki gets in the way of Gin's attack. Yoichi and Soifo then appear and attempt to restrain Aizen, and then everyone from the Gotai 13th shows up surrounding Aizen, Gin, and Tozen. But Aizen smiles a bit. Suddenly, multiple Menos Grande tears the sky open and surround the big three in a ray that cannot be broken, as it lifts them into the sky and they disappear. Everyone who is unwounded runs to the wounded and tries to help them. Byakuya then asks to speak to Rukia as he is bleeding out and tells her the reason why he adopted her, which was that Rukia was his wife's younger sister but she abandoned Rukia due to it being super hard to live in the Sumo district. So Byakuya searched for Rukia as much as he could, and luckily he found her, as it was his wife, Hisana's final wish before dying for Byakuya to protect Rukia. Some of the captains end up thanking Ichigo and his friends for actually helping him, and the next day everybody gets fully treated. The party stays in the Soul Society for a while just to make sure everything is alright, before going back to the world of the living. They then get back as Kisuke was waiting for them, and, and Kisuke apologizes for the tricks he used in order to make them go on this adventure and attempt to protect the Hokyoku. We then see the party now living their normal lives as normal Ichigo gets dropkicked by his dad. However, this time, there is someone standing on the air observing Ichigo and his party. 